Apparently, the laundries are giving some more details about what it was they actually knew about the situation between Brian, their son, and Gabby Petito. Let's talk about it. Hey guys, this is Jules with True Crime Reactions. Disclaimer. Everything stated in this video is my opinion and my opinion only. And just like everything else in these cases we discuss here on this channel, everything is alleged. Okay, so I get home and all over my phone is alerts talking about how the laundries have given more details. Now we already know, like for a freaking fact, okay, that before he headed back home in Petito's little camper van thingy that they were driving all over the place in that his parents knew what the hell was going on there's nothing that either one of them could possibly say to make me change my mind seriously it's like one of those like what's the meme of the guy at the table okay like seriously like fight me on it bro <laughs> like, they knew they knew everything well apparently they've given some more information and what i found here and it's wfla okay i know how we feel here about mainstream media, all right? But this is like 10 key takeaways that they received or felt like were super important out of the like over 700 pages of sworn statements, okay? Your girl don't have the time to read 700 pages of just one case, okay? So we're gonna go over this WFLA little, you know, thing that they put together here because it's pretty detailed, it's pretty long, it has a lot of quotes and stuff in it, all right? I'm really curious about if there's anything actually new in this, because like I said, we all know the truth here. We know that they're not innocent in, in, in anything when it comes to not being good humans, okay? Because obviously they're not the ones who took Gabby's life, but they're very much responsible for Gabby's family's pain because they knew off the bat or else they wouldn't be blocking people. They wouldn't have been blocking Gabby's family, all right? If it wasn't already known to them what was happening. They weren't responding to anything for weeks, okay? They knew, their behaviors tell you off the bat. They knew, they're horrible humans, plain and simple. In their minds, they might think they're protecting their son, but in the long run, look what happened. There was no protection. He's apparently gone anyway, even though, <laughs> Some people question that. So let's go ahead and go through this WFLA article and see if there's anything new. Okay, the title, Gabby's Gone. Brian Laundrie's parents reveal what happened after Petito's death in new deposition. Now this says, in the hours after the murder of Gabby Petito, Brian Laundrie made repeated phone calls to his parents who years later continued to maintain they were never told Petito was dead according to these documents and apparently all of this stuff was released yesterday now today is tuesday the 13th i will probably not get this video out until valentine's day tomorrow the 14th because it is already late and i just don't have i don't have the energy to edit this video so just just know that for if i say yesterday or something like that it's really like a whole day off <laughs> Okay, for the first time since Petito's murder in August of 2021, Petito's parents, Joe Petito and Nicole Schmidt, and Laundrie's parents, Chris and Roberta Laundrie, answered questions under oath in deposition for their civil trial scheduled for May. WFLA has reviewed more than 700 pages of the depositions, which took place in October of 2023. Petito and Schmidt were suing, are suing, the Laundries and their longtime attorney, Stephen Bertolino, <laughs> that dude is a whole freaking trip in a half for intentional infliction of emotional distress. See what I mean? See what I mean? And there's proof of the phone calls and of their actions of then blocking Gabby's family. There is proof of the fact that they could have handled this differently and they chose not to. They could have done the right thing here. Maybe their son would still be alive. Maybe they'd be able to actually still talk to him. Maybe they'd actually be able to still hear his voice if he's actually, you know, no longer alive. Maybe that would be the situation if they would have just done the right thing, talked him down and talked him into turning himself in or even called the cops themselves, yo. Let me tell you something, okay? It would have to take 
really, 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 really extenuating circumstances for me to feel like the best option for my child would be to hide them from the cops. I in no way am wanting my child to live a life on the run. You can't live that way. You can't get a job that way. You can't have a family that way. You can't have friends that way. You can't have an open life that way to where you have people close to you. You don't want that. You don't want that. And as horrible as this is, he'd still be alive. He'd still be alive. Gabby's family would have known and not all this crazy stuff would have happened. All of this searching and all this wasted money. None of this would have, would have happened if they would have just been honest and done the right thing by their son. Just saying. The plaintiffs claim the Laundries were aware Brian had murdered Gabby and chose to do nothing other than release statements through Bertolino, including one expressing hope Gabby would be found. And that's just sick. That is just so freaking demented. Here are the takeaways from the depositions. Laundries say they were told Gabby's gone, but claim they weren't told she was dead, which is something we've already known that they were saying. And honestly, they're the only person, you know, those are the only two people that can attest to that. Brian, you know, the other part of that conversation is gone. You know, he can't be asked these questions. So it's all their story and no one else's. And of course, no one believes them. You don't block family members of the girl's family that your son has been with for years at this point that was you know they were engaged and then kind of like put it off and you know they were together they wanted to apparently like get married and be together forever you know that whole thing okay you don't block you don't block your son's fiance's family the second that he thinks that they've broken up okay that's not breakup behavior that's oh crap, we got to hide my son because he left a body behind behavior, okay? In his deposition, Chris Laundry admits that August 29th, 2021, two days after Petito is believed to have been murdered, is the day when everything hit the fan. Chris said Brian called him in a frantic state and said, Gabby's gone. Chris claims he has no idea what his son meant and after being asked for help, he called Bertolino. And what did he say to you? Chris Laundry was asked during questioning. I asked him, you know, how is he doing? And he, you know, he was not calm and he got very excited and told me things had, you know, Gabby's gone and he got very frantic. Everything was frantic and quick. So, you know, Gabby's gone. Meaning what? The attorney asked. Well, I have no idea what he meant, Chris said. You do not need to obtain an attorney in a state that you do not live in because you and your girl broke up, sweetheart. Miss me with your lies. What else did he say? Well, it was quick. He said, you know, he was very panicked and he said he didn't know what to do. He said, you know, can you help me? You know, and he might need a lawyer, you know. I mean, no, we don't know. That's why we're asking. And I would. I asked him why he wouldn't tell me. He was very frantic everything was frantic and i started to not really comprehend and then he just said you know can you help me and i said okay i'll help you and i calmed him down and i said i don't know chris laundry recalled it was it was all mumbled and i still don't remember everything that happened but you know he said he needed help and to get an attorney and i told him yeah i'll help you i'll call steven bertolino and just stay put and then i asked him again and he just said just help me and I said, yeah, I'm going to. So stay calm, stay put. And he hung up. Chris and Roberta maintain they were never told anything other than Gabby's gone. And because they say Gabby was known to disappear for periods of time, they did not believe Gabby had been murdered. What? Why have we never heard that part before? So they're sitting there in front of her parents saying this. But then you're expecting me to believe that whenever you know damn well that your son is driving back in her vehicle. She's just known to like what poof and vanish into midair, you know, and, and then just miraculously show back up like an alien abducted her and drop her back off. Is that what you're trying to tell me? Because he had her car. These parents, bro, these freaking parents. Where did you think? What did you think gone meant? Chris was asked. I didn't even know what to think at the moment, you know, at all. So that's that he responded. No, no, that's not that. 
okay, well, if he told you that she was gone, but she just walked away, would he have been frantic, do you think? All's I know is what he told me, and it was very quick and very, very nervous and very scattered, so I don't remember everything he said, but he said he needed help, and I calmed, I tried to calm him down. He would not calm down, and he hung up the phone on me. I'm backtracking in my head. And that's something else that I feel like I want to go back and do is the timeline over again. Now, I was going through my own situation at the exact same time this was happening. This case, this case almost is the reason why I started the channel, but I was too emotionally connected to this case. There was no freaking way that I was about to be able to come on YouTube with fresh cuts on my neck and talk about this case. That's why Kylie Rodney was my first case because she reminded me of my child and it triggered me seeing Sammy Smith lie in her little interview. Okay. This case pisses me off because they're straight up lying. And I know parents like this because my ex's mother was one just like this. I'm telling you now, right now. Okay. As whatever is out there as my witness, if he would have actually taken our lives, she would have hit him. I promise you that on my children and on everything that I am made of, she would have tried to have hide my ex the way that the laundries tried to hide Brian. I promise you that. It, I know these people's behaviors and it makes me just sick to my stomach. Like that's probably why I'm stopping and talking so much because reading this stuff is just literally making me nauseous. It really is. The Laundries contacted Bertolino and sent him a $25,000 retainer because you need a $25,000 retainer for a breakup. Ugh, Bertolino began acting as an attorney on the Laundries behalf, contacting attorneys for representation in Wyoming. Again, if you just broken up and she's just gone off with some rando or just disappeared because y'all are broken up, what do you need an attorney in your state in that state for? If you don't live there, if that's just where y'all were vacationing and where y'all broke up and now Gabby's gone, what do you need an attorney for? Despite saying earlier in the depositions that they had love for Gabby, Chris and Robert said they never considered contacting Gabby's parents after learning Gabby was gone. No, instead of trying to contact them, you literally went into your phone and into all of your social media, typed in or scrolled down to their freaking contact information, and then hit block. There are several steps one has to take in order to block somebody on a device, okay? They can try and lie all they want to. All of their behaviors were already done. All of the actions that we need to judge these people, okay, they're already done. These words, this deposition doesn't mean shit. They already did the actions that prove that they're full of it. I didn't call Gabby's parents, no, because I had no reason to. At that very moment, to think anything was, was going on. Gabby took off and did things that I, you know, she on her own free will. So I had no idea what, where she was, Chris said. I left it in my attorney's position there, Chris added later. So you didn't have any reason to think that anything was going on, but you just sent 25 grand to your attorney for your kid in another state? Come on. Brian Laundrie's storage unit mystery, bro, let me tell you, that one part right there throws me all the way off throws me all the way off. The, the whole like round trip last minute thing to come out and, and clean out some storage unit after the argument, like all of that so threw me off. According to the depositions of Chris and Roberta, Brian moved all of his belongings from his parents' home into a storage unit in Florida a week before he left with Gabby on their trip, but never specified why. Okay, that part I didn't know. I thought this was like stuff that was already in a unit like had been in the freaking unit. I didn't know that he purposely moved all of his crap out of their house. Okay, on August 17th of 21, five days after the encounter with Moab police, Brian left his trip with Gabby to fly home to Florida to move his belongings out of the storage unit and back in with his parents. Brian said this was to save money. Why is it that Brian came back to do that instead of asking you to do it? Chris was asked. We offered to do it. He seemed anxious to come home to say, 
you know, maybe he just wanted to come home, you know? <laughs> okay. Well, that was five days after the Moab incident. Was there anything that you observed about Brian when he came home that caused you concern? None. I hate these parents. These are not parents. These are enabling dick faces. <laughs> And he didn't tell you there had been a police incident between he and Gabby just days before. No, Chris said. And he seemed fine. He did. Did he have any bruising on him that you were aware of? No. Did you know why he came alone? I have. I don't know why he came alone. I thought he just wanted to come and see us and say hello, Chris responded. Did you ask him why Gabby didn't come with him? It sounded as if she wanted time to make her website. So that was the only reason. The only reason that he said she couldn't do it while she was there. I don't know. She couldn't do it while she was there. I guess like she couldn't do it if she was back and like actively moving stuff. I just don't understand. Like if there wasn't a Moab incident, would he have flown back and moved all of his crap back into his parents' house? Like, that's just really weird. That is really super weird that they're just like, they're just traveling. They're not, they're not moving. This isn't like their life forever. They were just traveling. He lived with his parents. Like they both lived there before they took off and traveled. And before they took off and traveled, he moved all of his stuff out of their house and into the unit. And then after Moab went back. So yeah, that's my question. If Moab would not have ever freaking happened. Would he have even flown back and done what he did with his stuff and moved it back into his parents' house? What was the original thought process he was having? Man. Did he tell you where she was staying? Yeah. What did he say? Well, staying in the hotel. I don't know where exactly. Did he say why she was staying in a hotel? She didn't feel safe, so Brian put her in a hotel. Yeah. Did he talk about the trip did he talk with you about the trip wait let me backtrack for a second that's a weird statement because whenever the whole moab situation happened he's the one that got put in the hotel and she got to take the van i mean granted it's in her name it was her van but they like made sure that he was put up and safe for the night and then just left the little blonde little tea tiny fairy looking girl all by herself to fend for herself i mean i don't really think that brian was much protection. I mean, whatever, whatever. All right. I'm sorry. Speaking ill of the dead. All right. He looked really weaselly. All right. I just don't think that he was a big old macho protector, but to still like leave her out there by herself, the cops was odd to me. Okay. I always thought that was a little bit strange, even though granted, like I just said, it was her property. The van was her property, but it still rubbed me wrong. But if she was out there by herself for that, why couldn't she have been by herself in her van? I mean, honestly, I feel like hotels are like worse. <laughs> Did he talk with you about the trip? No, not really, he replied. Did you ask him where he'd been? No. Did you ask him how Gabby was? Yeah. What did he say? Everything was fine. So your son is on like some extravagant trip and it's like awesome because they're posting all this stuff about it online and it's like beautiful, everything they're going to see, but you don't even have a conversation with your son about all these awesome things he's walking around and, and driving around and looking at. You don't ask no questions weird. Petito attorney Pat Riley says that even after countless hours examining the case, Brian's decision to presumably spend money to fly home and put Gabby in a hotel to empty the storage unit he had begun renting out just two months prior remains a mystery. Yeah. So this whole situation, this whole little context we just read didn't give us nothing. <laughs> More questions, honestly. More freaking questions. It made it just a bigger mystery, in my opinion. Brian said he and Gabby intended to work at a pumpkin patch farm in Oregon. During the trip home to empty the storage unit in August of 21, Brian Laundrie spent five days with his parents in Northport while Gabby remained in a hotel by herself near Utah. Among the conversations Brian had with his parents, Chris says is that he and Gabby intended to drive to Oregon to work on a pumpkin farm. When he came home, did you have any concerns about him and continuing the trip? Chris Laundry was asked. No, no. And he told us again that they were going to Oregon to maybe work in a pumpkin place that he, that they'd get learn farming and help with that season of pumpkins. That's it. That's what he told me. Okay. 
Joe Petito. Will there ever be justice for Gabby Petito? When asked if Brian's death allowed him to escape accountability, Joe said Laundry took the coward's way out, preventing his family from getting justice. I agree. And by him dying, you are not able to get justice. There will be no justice for Gabby Petito, Joe said. That has to be so... That has to be really hard to say that as a father about what happened to your daughter. That has to be really freaking hard to say that out loud. Does this lawsuit have anything to do with you seeking justice? This lawsuit has, is, is to get a sense, but no, it's really to hold people accountable for their actions and their choices, Joe continued, and they need to be held accountable, desperately need to be held accountable. Joe Petito, there's no amount we will settle for. Good. I'm actually really freaking glad to hear that. The Petito family is seeking damages of at least $100,000. When asked what he hoped to accomplish with the lawsuit, Joe Petito said he was looking to hurt them as much as they hurt us. And there's no amount they will settle for. Meaning it doesn't matter the amount of money that is actually inputted into this lawsuit and the documentation. It's never going to be enough. And they're just going to keep pushing until there's accountability. I believe it too. I don't want, I don't give a shit about a dime. I don't, I don't care. I work, I do well. It's not about the money, Petito said. I want to make them hurt as much as they hurt us. As I told Pat, there's not an amount of money that I would settle for, not a dime. And how, how is this lawsuit going to help you change laws? Petito was asked. It's not, this lawsuit's not going to help me do anything. He said, okay. Okay, now, I know you mentioned earlier that one thing that you would like to get out of this lawsuit is for the laundries to experience the pain you felt, the lawyer continued. How? How would you? How would you get this from this lawsuit? Because they would. Anything that's out of their control, they can't. They can't control what the jury's going to do. They can't control what the judge is going to do. So they've got to sit there and be tormented and pay legal bills for all of you guys. And I don't give a shit. I hope they go bankrupt on your shit. I truly do. I don't want a dime from them. I don't give a shit about their money. I can just like, oh, I can like feel his anger and I'm not even like, it's not even his voice. I can just like, I can feel it, man. Okay. Nicole Schmidt. We wish police had seen Brian Laundry. In her deposition, Petito's mother said she was dissatisfied with the way the North Port Police Department handled their investigation after her daughter was reported missing. Brian Laundrie never spoke to investigators about Petito. He refused to talk to the police when they went to the family's home to question him about her disappearance, invoking his Fifth Amendment right. How about, do you know if the media was putting pressure on the Laundries to make a statement? I, I don't know. I was focusing on our side of things, Schmidt replied. What on your side of things were you hopeful that, whether it be law enforcement or the media, that outside forces would put pressure on the laundries to make some kind of statement? I think I would have been. I was hopeful that the police were doing their job. I didn't care if the media were doing anything. I just wanted the police to do their job. Now, you did seem to mention earlier that you were not satisfied with what the Northport police had done, that you felt like the FBI had done a better job. Is that correct? Schmidt was asked. For the most part, yes, she responded. Okay, what? What is it that the Northport police did not do that you wish they had done? They never actually physically saw Brian, so it would have been nice if they just knew that he was actually there, because they didn't even know he went missing. They would have seen him leave, apparently. They told us they were watching the house, but they didn't see him leave. I remember that day. Vividly. Freaking vividly. The media was everywhere. All over the place already. And he had just, like been able to get away somehow and no one even realized that he had ever walked out the house that he had gotten in any sort of vehicle that he had taken off at all somehow he had done this literally like 
in the most stealthy ninja freaking way. Literally no one saw this happening. Roberta Laundry, embarrassing burn after reading letter written before Gabby and Brian's trip. Roberta Laundry spoke about an undated letter she wrote to her son, which is labeled burn after reading. The letter, which contains references to a shovel, burying a body and getting Brian out of prison is being used by the Petito family as potential evidence. Look, and obviously there's like some circumstantial shit going on there because if that letter was given to him before the trip and before the trip, he moved all of his shit out of his house and into a storage unit. I don't know, man. <laughs> like my brain, my brain just does its thing and I'm just going to stop now and just continue reading this. The letter which contains references to a shovel. Okay, I did that part. Okay. Nothing can make me stop loving you. Nothing will or could ever divide us no matter what we do or where we go or what we say. We will always love each other, part of the letter said. If you're in jail, I will bake a cake with a file in it. If you need to dispose of a body, I will show up with a shovel and garbage bags. If you fly to the moon, I will be watching the skies for your re-entry. If you say you hate my guts, I'll get new guts. In her deposition, Roberta said she wrote the letter before the couple set off in their cross-country trip. Before he was leaving for his him and Gab's trip in May of 2021, she said, yeah, like right before they left, like just a few days, which is like around the time he moved all of his crap out of their house. When asked why the letter wasn't dated, Roberta said she just didn't think to date it. I don't always date notes, Roberta said. She said she wrote the letter thinking her son might be away for a little longer than I, you know, I knew he was going away. That statement is odd. I was going to miss him and I just wanted to make sure he knew I loved him. Well, you're his mother. I mean, doesn't he know that automatically? I thought he might be concerned since I was disappointed that he might think, yeah, I don't love him, but no, I mean, I really didn't think he, I just wanted to reassure him that I loved him no matter what, no matter if he moved away, if he decided to stay out West, if he, whatever he did. If he didn't buy a house and decided to do something else, I don't know. Whatever he did, I always love him. That tells me there was a lot of really intense arguments between them about his future and what he was going to do versus what she was okay with him doing. That's how I'm reading it anyway. When asked why she labeled the letter burn after reading, Roberta said she was inspired by a book Gabby bought her son called burn after writing, which I've heard that before, but that's still just weird that you're taking inspiration from a gift that was given to your son by the woman that he's sleeping with. That's just freaking weird. It was how you could put your deepest thoughts down. And if they were embarrassing, you didn't want anyone else to read them. The advice on the book was to just burn it. So it was like a little joke that I knew he would get. He would know what I was referring to. And I did not want him to get rid of it, not burn it, but throw it out so nobody read it. It's an embarrassing note. Well, you know, that's what someone writes on a letter when they don't want it to be discovered, right? She was asked, right? Roberta replied, okay, you didn't want this letter discovered, right? Yeah, it was embarrassing and I didn't want, you know, yeah, it's a silly letter. I didn't want, he's a grown boy and it was a joke really. He didn't have to destroy it and now I think it's sweet that he saved it. It was just a little joke man Ooh. <laughs> gabby and brian came back engaged from the first cross-country trip petito and laundry started dating in 2019 and got engaged in july of 2020 according to petito's instagram page which has been removed chris laundry said the couple had decided to take their relationship to new heights during another road trip out west do you know where they went he was asked where they went out west chris replied yes I know they went all the way to Oregon, so where there was in between, I don't know. Did they ever get engaged? Yes. Do you know when they got engaged? Somewhere along that trip, I think. The first trip. Yeah. Did you ever have any concerns about the relationship between Brian and Gabby? Any normal concerns of somebody new, somebody, you know, making commitments and all, but otherwise, no, he said. 
Do you recall any specific concerns you had? No, I didn't have any. Laundries. Brian never told us about the Moab incident. I actually believe that, honestly. I, I really do. Because he didn't go to jail. He didn't need to be bonded out. His So there was no reason for him to have to like use a phone call, involve anybody else. I honestly believe that they didn't know. I really do believe that part. Chris Laundrie said he was not aware his son and Petito had been questioned by police in Moab, Utah, until weeks after her death. Right, like whenever everyone else found out. Police had stopped the couple on August 12th of 2021 after a witness reported seeing Laundrie slap Petito. Body cam video shows police interacting with Gabby. The Petitos filed a wrongful death lawsuit against the department. I don't blame them for that either. And he didn't tell you that there was a police incident between he and Gabby just days before Chris Laundrie was asked. No, he responded. And he seemed fine. He did. Did he have any bruising on him that you were aware of? No. Do you know why he came alone? Talking about coming back to the storage unit. I have. I don't know why he came alone, Chris said. I just thought he wanted to come and see us and say hello. They repeated that part. I swear I just read that part. Did you ask him why Gabby didn't come with him? It sounded as if she wanted to make her website. Okay, this is all the same stuff. Because look, it's up here when it comes to... Where is it? Yeah, look. Sounded as if she wanted to make time for a website. It's the only reason, blah, 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 blah. That's what we just read. So they're just like repeating it again. You know, I came alone. Yeah, what do you say? Staying in a hotel. Okay, yeah. See, that's the, they used the exact same. Y'all lazy, WFLA. Roberta Laundrie, Bertolino, still our attorney. Roberta Laundrie was also asked if she and her husband were still being represented by attorney Stephen Bertolino, who they retained a week before Petito was reported missing. During the search, Bertolino frequently spoke to the media on the Laundrie's behalf. The Petito family claims Bertolino knew their daughter was deceased and where her body was located. By the way, does Mr. Bertolino still represent you and your husband? Roberta was asked. I believe so, yes, she responded. Wouldn't you know? if you were still paying that bill <laughs> for what without going into details anything related to this case i always think of him as my attorney for everything but so yeah for this case okay i guess so yeah that's why he's here right <laughs> yeah that's the end of that part yeah not really too many new details a lot of this stuff is stuff that we talked about the last time i did a video about this because they already admitted yeah, he said Gabby was gone, but then they tried to act like they didn't understand what that meant, even though they were paying, what is that, $25,000 to an attorney? You don't need an attorney in another state for a breakup, okay? For somebody just going off on their own and you being all sad and lonely and, oh my God, she's gone, she left me. You don't need an attorney for that. You definitely don't need one that needs a $25,000 retainer. So yeah, they've, they've been lying through their teeth out their butts, out their necks, out of every place they possibly can since the beginning. And it's just really sad. But then again, you also have to think, like if Gabby would have married this man, how miserable would that life had been because of the way that Roberta Laundrie is? Think about that. But that's it for these updates. If anything else ends up coming up out of this, I'll let you guys know. But like I said, I can't sit here and read through 700 pages of depositions. I'm, I'm just like floored at the fact that all this time later, they're still sitting here and acting like this ain't nothing. They're acting like it's nothing. Like, I understand that they're upset too, you know, because they, if Brian really is, you know, gone, because a lot of people, man, a lot of people don't think he's gone. A lot of people think he's alive and somewhere else. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of people do. And there's some things that make me question that. There's a lot of things that make me question that. I am really curious, actually, as if they mention anything about the way he was found in these depositions. I just don't know if any of the mainstream media people are going to come out and talk about that stuff. 
So I might have to make time to sort through 700 pages. But that is it, you guys. If you like the way that I present this information and my opinion, please not forget to leave a like on your way out and subscribe to the channel if you are not subscribed already. See y'all.